Hey everyone, this is Rachelle. Thank you for clicking on my video. I wanted to come in today and talk about these Risa Tisa videos. Y'all, I finally watched them. After saying that I wasn't going to watch them because it was 50 parts and I can't sit still that long. But what I did is I listened to them while I was working and I just binge watched them. And after I watched them, I waited for my daughter, who is 29, to watch them because I wanted to talk about them with her and what her impression is of the videos. Um, we are 30 years apart. My daughter is 29 and I am 59. So we're getting the perspective of two different generations. So first off, I want to tell you what I thought of the videos, how long they were, uh, Legion, everything. So first off, the thing that made me not want to watch the videos is because when I was reading the comments under the videos, everyone was saying that she was taking too long to tell the story. It was just too much. She could have did this in less than the time that she took. So that kind of, you know, made me say, well, I don't have time for all this. But because I also was seeing all these YouTube videos and people were giving their opinions before I got swayed by their opinions, I wanted to watch it. So I did. So the first takeaway that I got from this <clears throat> is that Risa is the average woman. There is nothing spectacular or different than any other woman out here that is in her age bracket, who wants to be married, who wants babies, and who wants a home. A woman that is looking for the American dream. I also write off you know, took note of the fact that this young woman is also religious and she was raised to think a certain way, to behave a certain way. Right off, she told you that she knew that a lot of the decisions that she made were stupid and that they went against everything that she was taught, everything that she thought about herself and how she would handle different situations and she knew in her heart that moving in with him so quickly was so was wrong um, you know everything that she did was wrong I even liked when she talked about God was trying to show her that it was wrong at every turn remember when she was on her way to the first date with him and she got a flat later on you know when she was closing down her series of videos she said that that was God you know saying hey I don't even want you to make it to this day this is not gonna be good for you so I'm gonna give you a flat after watching all of the videos this is what I come away with this bottom line the only thing that she's guilty of is wanting love and falling in love now what he did with that love what he did with her trust and her desire to be married her desire to have a baby her desire to have a home he took advantage of that because he was was sick now in the videos I noticed that Risa kept on saying that he was a pathological liar he was that amongst other things he was a sociopath borderline personality disorder um, bipolar now these are all the things that I was saying and I'm no clinical person but that is the only way that I can come up with to describe how he moved. 
He love bombed her and she fell for it. Y'all, what I did is I put myself back. I took myself back to the age of a woman, you know, early 30s, mid 30s, and the way I thought then. And I'm not going to lie. He would have got me in the beginning. Uh, when she got the flat and he bought the tire, I would have been impressed. I liked how they sat and talked to after midnight that first date. I would have, I would have liked that. I'm a talker, and for a man to talk and hold my interest because his conversation, you know, is interesting to the point that I wanted to sit and talk to him that long. I would have left that day saying, hmm, he seems like a decent guy. You know, he can hold a conversation. When he saw I was a damsel in distress with the flat tire, not only did he help me, but he paid for the tire. Now, where I had an eyebrow up with Risa is moving in with him so early. And she even acknowledges that, you know, that was wrong. Everything that happened after that, y'all, the mind games that he was playing with her. When he met her, he pegged her right away. I believe that Legion picks a certain type of woman. He has a type. Something about them, once he talks to them, he knows what to look for and what type of woman would would fall for him and he's good at what he does so after he talked to her he packed her you know he knew that this girl was at a point in her life where she wanted the American dream and she was actively looking for that and he prayed on that all the things that he was doing with the car with the house, the line, the all of that. Now, I agree with a lot of the comments that said that she was, and I don't want to use that word desperate because I don't feel that she was des desperate. I feel that it was exactly what she said, that she wanted it to be her turn. And she thought that she had found the person who would make that possible. Unfortunately, she found this fool. Now, I'm not going to go, you know, episode by episode, you know, each one of the videos. I'm not going to go through that. I want to just talk about the overall impact of what I saw and how it affected me. I'm not going to lie, y'all. When I was younger, I would have fell for him. Now, would I have stayed around as long as Risa did? I don't think so. I'm a scary person. And some of the behaviors that he was showing, displaying, would have scared me off. I would have waited till he went to work, quote unquote, and I would have backed the U-Haul up in there and I would have been out. Whether it was my apartment from the beginning or not, he could have had at it. I'd have been out because his behavior and it, and this also is coming from a woman who is 59 and who has hit, lived a little life and has seen things that I know hey when they act like this further along down the line this might turn into that well here's what I'm gonna say when I was in my early 30s I hadn't developed all this knowledge that I have now and he probably would have lured me in and fucked me over for quite a long time before I woke up and realized what was going on and I'm just being honest that was the the young woman that I was you know I am a person that believes in love and I am a hopeless romantic so that would have that would have been my way of thinking. I would have gotten roped in. For 
all the things that she went through and the lies, I, my heart went out to her, you know. When she had the miscarriage, my heart went out to her. When she was starting to really get proof, because she always suspected something wasn't right with him. But as she started doing her investigation, and she was starting to confirm things, I, I was just blown away with the extent that he went to to make her believe things. You know, I think about when he took her to the cemetery and he was saying that, you know, his grandma was buried there or I don't remember, was his grandmother? Yeah, it was his grandma. And that there was like a family plot and she wanted to be buried by her husband and all that. You know, and he found a headstone that matched to this family name or whatever. The the thought that went into all of that, you got to be really, really demented to even think of this and then take her there, make up this big elaborate story. Y'all, this man was just beyond unbelievable. Even to when she had gotten him out the house, he had went away to the other state, and then he was, he found out that by right she couldn't put him out the house because they were married, and he was calling her and blowing up her phone and telling her he was on his way back. I would have been beyond terrified, y'all, beyond. I would have packed my stuff up again. I would have backed the U-Haul up and I would have been out. I think I would have moved out when he left. That way he didn't know where I was. All throughout this, watching this, y'all, I couldn't help but go back to the person that I was at her age. And I saw a lot of comments Ooh, really bad comments um, under this girl's videos. Judgmental, you know, mean-spirited comments. And that's what made me go back to when I was her age. And just realized that even though she knew that a lot of things that he was saying and doing was suspect, her desire to be happy or to find that happiness or shape that happiness overrode her good sense. And I like that this, she didn't try to sugarcoat it. She said that it was hard making these videos because in hindsight, she realizes how naive she was, how stupid she was, how she turned a blind eye. She gave him passes and she allowed this to get to the point that it was. Because something my mother taught me years ago when I was a young woman, a person can only do to you what you allow them to. And she allowed herself to be lied to, mistreated, and just everything else that he did to her. Now, when I was talking to my daughter I wanted to hear her opinion of it without me giving her mine first. Because as I mentioned, we are 30 years apart. My daughter had a lot of empathy for her, a lot of empathy. And that surprised me because my daughter is an alpha female. She doesn't take shit from anyone. My daughter is the type of young woman that she could be dating someone, telling me how much she loves them and maybe this is the one and she's planning their, you know, their future. Let him make one misstep. She could be dating him on Friday, break up with him in the afternoon and be dating someone else Monday. She doesn't let grass grow under her feet. She knows her worth and she does not put up with stuff. 
But what she told me surprised me. She said, Mom, when we went on the first date and he paid for the tire, she said the same thing that I said. When he paid for the tire and I was able to talk to him for hours, she said I would have considered that a good date. She said, and because he was an expert at saying and doing what he knows that women like, she said he would have gotten me too. She told me, however, that it wouldn't have been for long. Because she said, Mom, you know me. I'm not like you. I'm not a hopeless romantic. As soon as I would have started questioning things he said to me, did to me, and I caught him in a lie, it would have been a wrap. See, I'm the type, well, I was the type when I was younger. I would have been like, well, you know, everyone tells a lie every once in a while, and I'll forgive this one. My daughter's not like that. First time you cross her, it's a wrap for her. So the fact that she would have even given him a few days and all of that, it surprised me. Now, she did, like I said, she would not have moved in with him so quickly. Um, my daughter is like me. She likes her privacy. She has a guy. He has his own place. She has her own place. And they've been dating for a while. I don't see my daughter moving in with anyone unless she sees that this is moving towards marriage. You know, I'm not the type of mother who believes that don't live with them until you get married. I'm not old fashioned like that. I believe that you need to live together before you get married, even if it's just for a year. So you can see what it feels like to actually be in this man's company, you know, in each other's space on a permanent basis. That way, when you get married, you kind of have a feeling what the day-to-day -day life with him is like. I think that Risa, she made a lot of wrong turns. But as a woman, I'm not going to condemn her. Because we all have had a legion in our life. Maybe not to the extent that he was, but different aspects of him. Who amongst us has not had a lion ass man? Who amongst us hasn't met a man and he presented himself to be one way, but as you got to know him, you realized that everything that he told you up front was a lie? Who amongst us hasn't been with a man who told us, hey, I make this amount, I got this going on, but as you get to know him, you realize, hey, he exaggerated that a bit. Now, Legion had everything rolled up in one. And he had a little craziness going on with him. But when I saw how other women were condemning her, I was thinking, we all have played a fool once in our lifetime. They write songs about it. everybody plays a fool. Sometimes we all do. We just do it in different degrees. Risa took a lot that she didn't deserve. My impression of her is she is a nice, sweet young lady. Like I said, the only thing that I believe that she's guilty of is loving him and wanting that life that's what she's guilty of the rest is all him you know it's all him then I see where he's responded to her and he said that everything she said was a lie he left her she cheated on him all this stuff but then you have other women who have dated him who are coming out the woodworks and confirming what Risa said because they had their own experiences with them. 
For me, this whole story is a cautionary tale to a young woman. I wish when I was younger, when I was in my 20s, in my 30s, my early 30s, that we had had something like TikTok and YouTube and all of this, where information was at your fingertips, where you can sit and watch a young woman tell a story about something that happened to her. And certain aspects of it, you can identify with her. Certain aspects, you were, you would be saying, now that's a bridge too far. I, uh, girl, I wouldn't have, I wouldn't have done all that. I wouldn't have stayed that long. I wouldn't have, woo, woo, woo. We didn't have any of this. So, a lot of experiences, women my age, we just went through it. You know, if we were hard-headed and we didn't listen to our moms, and we were the type of young woman that, didn't believe shit shit happened we went through it you know got with these guys they took us through the ringa and then we were lucky to get out on the other side with our sanity you know but today's woman she has all kind of ways to figure things out with the help of social media and there's a reason why uh, Risa Tisa's video went viral because it for me I saw myself in her at different points in my life being trusting being gullible being for, forgiving you know and wanting to be in love and have that whole dream. I would be lying if I said that I didn't put up with some things that I didn't deserve. I would be lying. So that's why I can give her the grace of saying, now maybe you went a little further than what I would have, but I've been there, girl. I've been there. To these women that are being just, whew, some of y'all have tearing her up, talking about her looks, that she's fat, you know, however she looks, whatever her weight is, she didn't deserve what she got, you know, she didn't deserve it, think about that, I'm going to say it again, she didn't deserve it. What that man took her through, a weaker woman, he could have broke her. He could have broke her. She woke up. Might have been a little late after she had gone through a lot, but she eventually woke up. When you are quick to be judgmental, when you are quick to say what you won't do, what you ain't going to take, what a, you know, I wish a motherfucker would. Fate has a way of saying, hey, you think that can't be you? You think that can't happen to you? Let me show you how women end up in these situations. You know? Let me show you how quickly these guys can flip a script and change on you. That person you thought was good for you flip on you and you turns into this stranger that you don't even know who he is like I said this is a cautionary tale one that I wish I could have watched when I was in my early 20s would have saved me a lot of heartache because I would have looked at what this girl went through and it would have stuck with me and it would would have taught me to investigate stuff, to run those background checks that she later on started doing, to verify things he was saying, to listen to my instinct when my instinct was telling me danger, danger, something about him is not right. All of that would have stuck with me just from watching her video. Because when I was younger, I wasn't 
hard-headed. Someone could have spoken to me earnestly, or I could have sat and watched something like that, and I was the type of young person that I would have listened. I would have heeded that warning, paid attention to her cautionary tale. And that's all I'm going to say about the video. I also want to briefly talk about what Charlemagne the God said. Big back. You know, I, I just don't understand how from everything that she went through. He went to talking about how she looks and big back women need to stop being so desperate. Y'all, I'm going to tell you something. Thank God that there are men out here that like women in every shade of the rainbow, every shape. Just, you know, they like different type of women. There are men out there that prefer what Charlemagne the God calls a big bag. They prefer a full-figured woman. We'll let you know in a minute. you just too damn little for them. They like women with meat on their bones. I know a guy right now who is as handsome as he want to be. He does not date any woman that is, I would say, under about 250 at all. Now these women are pretty, they're really feminine, really extremely feminine, and they take care of themselves and they're confident. So he already likes bigger women and when he finds them when they're, he likes them to be real feminine and confident. And you would think he was talking to freaking Marilyn Monroe, the way he treats them. And this is a good looking brother. But that's his preference. So all this big back that Charlemagne the God is talking about. So because she got a big back, she shouldn't expect to be treated correctly. That because she got a big back, she's labeled desperate. Like I said, the only thing Risa was guilty of is wanting love. Wanting to be loved. You know? And there's quite a few of us out there that want that. That that thing, that feeling. God intended us to couple off. To be loved. And to give love. And that's all she was trying to do. So, to me... The fault was legions. Legion, as we know, just from these other videos that other women that he dated have put out. He has some screws loose. His own family said they don't F with him because of the lies he tells and the things he has done. His friends just like she said as she was contacting people. They didn't even want to hear his name. Told her don't never call her. Call them again. They didn't want to hear nothing about him. He has burned bridges everywhere he went. Everywhere he's been. This guy is bad news. And he's good at what he does. He's perfected it. Couple that with the mental issues that he's been diagnosed with. It's a recipe for disaster. For disaster. Actually, I'm going to say this and then I'm going to get out of here. I fully anticipated part of her story being that he was physically abusive to her. Because the things that he was doing and the conniving and the lying and, the, you know, all this espionage that he was in I was like the next step you know from the way this man is moving is for him to pop her upside her head a couple times he was he was too much y'all he was too much like I said I would have been terrified of him terrified 
I don't know, y'all. I'm glad that Risa woke up. I'm glad that she started listening to that voice in her head that was always there. It was always there. I'm glad that she recognized that every step of the way God was with her, but she wasn't listening. Even to when she mentioned having the miscarriage, she said something to the effect of, that baby didn't need to be here. I didn't need to have a baby by him. And the Lord made sure that didn't happen. You know? Sadly, the baby, you know, wasn't viable and it didn't survive. But in the long run, and when we see how Risa's story ended with Legion, the death of that baby was for the best. You know? The death of the baby, sadly, was for the best. Y'all, that's about all that I have to say. My daughter and I, we thoroughly enjoyed it. We had a lengthy conversation about it. My daughter opened my eyes to a few things that I hadn't even thought of. You know, that's that generational thing. And I value my daughter's opinion. I really wanted to hear, you know, what she had to say and what she thought of it. And she surprised me, you know, with her observations and some of the things that she picked up on that I didn't even notice, you know. Something my daughter said, and I'm definitely going to get out of here. You remember when Risa discovered the differences in the social security numbers. There was one on the marriage license and then one when she was trying to get the job. My daughter said, Mom, so if he signed the marriage license with the bogus social security number, were they even legally married? She said most documents will say, you know, before you sign it, make sure everything on here is correct to the best of your knowledge. This is a legal, legally binding document. So she said, if he put incorrect or false information on that license, were they really ever married? I had never thought of that. And there was another point that I'm not going to remember right now that my daughter brought up that I hadn't thought of it. And that's why a lot of times I like to get, you know, the opinions of some of these young people because they make you look at things from a different angle and they notice things that, you know, me as a 59-year-old woman slip right on by me. Y'all, all I can say is I was blown away by this story. And I will say this, there but for the grace of God go I. Because I was a loving, trusting, forgiving young woman. And he would have got me, y'all. I don't know for how long, but he would have definitely got me. And with that, y'all, thanks for watching my video. And I will see you guys in the next one. Bye-bye.